LERP, or linear interpolation in Unity, is a mathematical function that returns a value at a point between two others. It's typically used to move one value towards another over time, such as to animate movement, change slider values, or to fade out audio sources. However, while there are a lot of different things you could use LERP for, a commonly shared example is to use LERP to ease movement, which, while not exactly wrong, isn't what LERP is designed to do. In this video, you'll learn what LERP in Unity is actually for and how it works, so that you can decide for yourself how you want to use it. So, what does LERP actually do? While it can sometimes be used in complicated ways, LERP is actually a very simple function, and all it really does is return a point on a scale between a minimum value and a maximum value, based on the value of a third parameter, t, which is a weight between 0 and 1. So for example, if you define a scale of 0 to 100, and pass in a t value of 0 0.5, representing half, you'll get a value of 50 back. Pass in 1, and you'll get 100, the maximum. Or pass in 0, and you'll get the minimum, in this case, also 0. And that's LERP. That's all it does. So what's the problem? If you're confused about how LERP is supposed to work, then it's probably because of how it's sometimes used. For example, LERP is often used to move one value to another value over a period of time. This works by increasing the t value that's passed in over a fixed duration by dividing the time that's elapsed by the amount of time you want the movement to take. This creates a t value that progresses from 0 to 1 over a known period of time and returns a LERPed value that can be used to move an object, fade an audio source, or change a slider between two values smoothly. Then once the value reaches the end of the movement, it can be snapped to its final target value, finishing the transition. The rate of change that this method creates is linear, and because it has a start point, a finish point, and takes place over a known period of time, it's typically done inside of a coroutine. This is an extremely common use for LERP, and one that you're likely to see pretty often. However, there are also many examples of LERP being used as a dynamic easing method. So instead of moving on a scale between two points, the value is constantly moved from where it is towards a changing target. To do this with LERP typically involves replacing the minimum value with the current value of whatever it is you want to LERP, and passing delta time in place of t. What this does is return a value that's a fraction closer to the target from where it is now depending on how long the last frame took to process. The amount of change between the value's current position and the next position will then gradually get smaller and smaller as the total range of the scale that's passed into LERP is reduced. This creates a kind of easing movement where the rate of change continuously slows on approach. So why is this the wrong way to use LERP? And is there really a problem with this method? Put simply, no. Other than the fact that the value won't snap to the value it's approaching, it will just slow down so much that you won't notice it's still moving, there's nothing technically wrong with this method. After all, it's just a different way to use LERP, and if you like the effect that it produces, you should use it. However, while this method does ease a value towards a target, it can be difficult to control, as the rate of change isn't really scaled by anything, meaning that while it's not the wrong way, there may be a better way, depending on what it is you're trying to do. For example, smooth damp can be used to smoothly move a value towards a dynamic target over an approximate amount of time, where the beginning and end of the value's transition will be slowed, easing it in and out. This is particularly useful when chasing a target value that's always changing, as the function takes the value's current velocity, how fast it's changing right now, as well as the remaining distance from the target into consideration. As a result, it's often used to create a follow camera, where the speed of the camera may need to change based on the speed of its target, keeping it in view. Or, if you still want to move a value on a fixed time scale, like you normally would do with LERP, but you don't want the value's rate of change to be linear, it's possible to calculate a curve directly into the t value, such as a smooth step curve, for example, which eases the start and end of the value's range of travel or it's possible to modify a LERP value using an animation curve that you set in the inspector. This works by passing the t value into a public animation curve variable, which will then return a modified 0 to 1 value at the position on the curve specified by t. But when would you actually use any of this? The simplest version of LERP interpolates a float value and is a method of the math functions class. 
which can be used to transition a single float value between two known points, such as to fade out an audio source, to weight a value within an arbitrary range using a simple control, or to control the position of a health or stamina bar. However, this method of using LERP typically means that the value's transition will always take a particular amount of time to complete. The movement is controlled by its duration, meaning that a transition from the halfway point of a slider would take just as long as filling it up completely. Sometimes this may be exactly what you want, as it allows you to control the duration of a transition in seconds. But, if you want to control how fast a value changes, such as how quickly a stamina bar refills for example, then you may be better off using a function like move towards instead, which works in a similar way to lerp in that it changes a value towards a target on a linear scale, but it's controlled by speed, not time. Alternatively, it is possible to change how long lerp takes depending on the current position of the value. This works by calculating how much of the full scale of movement won't be used, which when converted to a percentage of the total range, can be used to scale the total duration meaning that it will take less time if the distance it needs to cover is shorter. This method can be useful when you want to control how long a transition should take, but if it's cancelled or starts from halfway, it takes less time to complete. Alternatively, it's possible to achieve the same effect by doing it the other way around, by using a target duration to calculate a rate of change that can be used with move towards, for example. The math function lerp is probably the version of lerp that you're likely to use the most often. However, it's not the only type of lerp function available in Unity. For example, the vector3 and vector2 lerp functions work in the same way as lerping a float, except that they're functions of their respective vector classes, not mathf, and can be used to interpolate between vector values instead of single numbers. Typically, they're used for lerping between positions, allowing you to interpolate between two points in the world, or to find a position between them using t as a weighting value. Color lerp can be useful for transitioning between two different colors, mixing them together or for fading an object out completely. It works by calling the lerp function of the color class and passing in a start and target color value as well as the weight value, just like when lerping a number. For example, you could use color lerp to create a mix of two other colors, or you could use it to fade an object out, such as a sprite, where the sprite's color, which is normally white and fully opaque, could be lerp to an RGBA color value of 1110, white but transparent, which has the effect of fading it out. However, because all this really does is change one value, the color's alpha, it's possible to achieve the same effect by lerping just the alpha component between 0 and 1. Or, if you want a retrofade effect, one color at a time, in order using a sequence of coroutines. Alternatively, if you want to fade out a canvas element, such as a menu button, text, or fade out the entire screen with a black overlay, it's generally easier to do that by using the set alpha method of an individual sprite or text object's canvas renderer. Or to fade an entire layer of UI objects, simply change the alpha property of a canvas group, which can be used to fade an entire UI all at once. Whatever it is you're using Lerp for, if you think that you're going to be using it to change many different values in your game, you might find it easier to use a third-party asset to do it for you. Such as DoTween, for example, which allows you to add lerp-style movements and animations to objects as components, or in a script as built-in functions. Or Feel, which is an artistic tool that applies commonly used effects and feedback to objects quickly and easily. If you want to know more about Feel or about DoTween, then check out the links in the video description. Now I want to hear from you. How are you using Lerp in your game? Are you using it to change values over time or to get a weighted mix between two variables? What have you learned about using Lerp in your game that you know others would find useful? Whatever it is, let me know by leaving a comment, like this video if you found it helpful, and get subscribed for more videos from me. I'll see you next time.